Solar Pathfinder, it's very commonly used in, in for, for, for analyzing where and how much we will have shadow, shadows on our PV plant. It's a highly polished, transparent, convex plastic dome and gives panoramic view of the entire site. Let's look at the picture. In this picture, we can see presentation of the trees and the buildings in the surrounding of the PV array or the proposed PV array. And we can see in different times of a day how much shadow gets into the area where, the, where we analyze the site, draw a line and calculate the loss. And that's how it looks like. We have different scales. These scales represent the different months and the different time of a day and different seasons. In the picture on the right, we can see an image, a presentation of the trees, and we can see that the shadow gets into approximately one third of the scale. We will know which month and which day and what time of that day a shadow will start, and that trees will go in and out. So we get a calculated presentation over the year of how much power we lose every single day if we place an array here and not there. And we talked about temperatures before, the effect of temperatures. And we said, as a statement, the higher the temperature, the less the efficiency. That means we can see in the graph, the red graph represents a higher temperature cell than the blue graph. It goes left, meaning that the corner, the rounded corner, which is the I times V, the multiplication of these two values generates a lower level of power. Ideally, we would like to push it to the right. So both the current and the voltage will be at the maximum, so the power will be at the maximum, but the temperature brings it left. And what we are interested is not, the, in the, not only the, the surrounding temperature, the environmental temperature, we are most interested in the surface temperature of the panel. The surface temperature of the panel can get to 55, 60 degrees, if the environmental temperature in the area can be 25, 30 degrees. These 55, 60 degrees, this is really what the silicon of the panel sees or feels. So the temperature, the efficiency drop because of the temperature is based on the surface temperature, not the environmental temperature. It's a very, very important. The difference between them is tremendously high. And when we do a site analysis, as we discussed before, is the type of roof that I want to put or analyze whether to put or not, that array. And if the roof is metallic, getting hot, and these heat waves coming up, reflected away from the, from the roof, will heat up the panels creating a heat pocket between the layer of panels and the metallic layer of the roof itself. So that's number one, this heat pocket. Another thing is that metallic structure. We can see in the center, the metallic profiles and this structure, which being connected, mechanically connected to the roof, because it's a metallic one, usually, by the way, it's aluminum made, and aluminum, by its nature, is a very good heat conductor, 
Not only that we create a heat pocket, but the heat will be transferred through the conduct through the structure to the panels. Now the panels are mechanically connected to the structure. So the metallic roof will transfer its heat to the metallic structure, which will heat up the backside of the panels. If it was a concrete painted white, then the problem will be less severe. So the idea is when we do site analysis, not only shadows, not only uh, telephone posts facing south, facing east, facing west, as we've seen before, but where exactly we are going to locate our panels. And if they are on a metallic roof, we need to place them further away in order to increase the space where wind can flow through and cool down the backside of the panels. We just said ventilation and cooling. Look at the picture on the left. It's a representation of wind flows along and across and through the panel. And we would like as much as air moving through the panel in order to cool it down. It's a natural PV system cooling. We want to eliminate the heat pocket, as we said before. And when we do, we do that, we increase the output power. Look at the picture on the bottom right. It's an array just a few centimeters away from the roof itself. Heat pocket. No air can flow through. No cooling. Less efficiency. The picture on the top right. Open air. Wind. Natural ventilation. And they are placed in a position, the picture on the right top corner, in a position where even if there is dust, and this is a dusty area, the dust will come down. Dust that will hit the panel will come down. The picture on the top right represents a structural configuration where the entire layer of the, of the panels is being raised away from that roof. It allows a lot of air, wind to flow through, creating, allowing ventilation. Look at the heat pockets on the top left factory. Large arrays, no spaces between one module and another. It's just like a huge plate and are very close to the roof itself, creating heat pockets. Not only that it's creating heat pockets, but the area of the roof, which is not covered by panels, of course, is getting hot, and the heat flows on that roof, and the, air, the hot air is dissipated from underneath the panels. And since we have a layer, a continuous, homogeneous layer of panels, the heat waves have no place where to go. They just go up and hit the backside of the panels. Lower the efficiency. This is a very bad example. A good example is the picture on the, top, on the bottom right. Same amount of energy is being produced. In other words, same number of panels, same a nominal output power of the entire signal system, but it's configured in a different way, where it allows ventilation. So there's a bad example and good example. 